building over here. Uh, crews did try to do a quick knockdown on that. Uh, unfortunately for us, the wind picked up and switched directions on us and it caused the fire to move to the north pretty rapidly. Uh, we had set up a fire protection line. The fire jumped that line, and then it jumped another fire break line, which is about a 50-foot opening we have between piles out here. Uh, and it's continued to travel north. The wind is not helping our situation, as you can imagine right now. Uh, so what we're doing is we're setting up to protect exposures, which are homes and businesses to the north and northeast. Uh, right now we have eight fire units out here. Seven of those are from Central County Fire District Number One. One of them is from Wichita Fire, and we're coordinating our activities together to try to protect those exposures. Uh, our priority is to protect the exposures and to not get anybody hurt. We have not had the report of any injuries, and we want to keep it that way. Unfortunately, I don't think the weather is going to cooperate with us very well, as the winds are expected to keep blowing. Uh, and so we're gonna we're gonna work on those uh, exposures and keeping those areas protected. Uh, we do understand that it's going to be really hot today, so we're also taking steps to protect our crews out here. We've got water, we've got Gatorade, we're getting them food, we're getting porta potties out. We have our rehab unit out here so they can get in out of the heat and get some air conditioned air. We're also going to keep them rotated about every four hours, so they'll be able to go back to the fire station, get some rest, get some uh, rehabilitation, and then uh, come back out after a four hour break period. So we are paying attention to that. Um, we are looking at different options. We've got a call into the state to ask if there's any aircraft support that we could get. For example, from the Air Guard with helicopters to drop some water or fire retardant. We haven't heard back from them yet, but we're keeping our ears open for that. I would also wanna say Two other things, Pizza Hut last night brought food out to our crews and we didn't even ask for it. It was unsolicited, so thank you to Pizza Hut. Uh, also, Jeff Rails and the crew here at Evergreen Pallet have been here all night on heavy equipment, moving piles of stock around and it's been a huge help. I know they're exhausted as well and we've been working closely with them. So, can I answer any questions for you? Yeah, it's, it's very difficult. Um, okay, so the weather conditions make it tough. It's really dry. We haven't had any rain now for three or four days. Uh, and with the wind and the heat the way it is, it just dries out the material. I mean, it's just kindling out there. It's all natural wood, so we don't have to worry about chemicals, which is nice. Uh, but even natural wood can still be an irritant. And these piles, they're within regulation size, but the piles are just massive and you can't overcome the BTUs that a fire produces with water unless you have more water than you have BTUs, and we can't put enough water on it. It's just such a massive area. We're talking 300 yards by 300 yards. We can't put enough water on this fire to put it out, so we're trying to at least contain it. No, the cause of the fire is still under investigation. Like I said, it wasn't an area where there was some mulch and uh, piles of uh, grass clippings. Those things are susceptible to spontaneous ignition, but we're reviewing all the videos. They have closed caption video on site. We're gonna review those videos and make sure there wasn't anything nefarious happening. Comparing fires from October 2022 that we did have here, uh -huh. compared to this one now, uh, is it more difficult by this one? Actually, it's a little easier because we had worked with Jeff and Evergreen to create some better access. And so while we're still having some access issues, it's actually better than it was two years ago. They've knocked the pile sizes down. They've made the pile sizes a little bit smaller. We still have some access issues, but that's a work in progress as well. And they've been really good to work with. The fire size is in a different location from two years ago, but the sizes of the fire are about the same. So it's just burning in a different area. Well, this, uh, this kind of heat takes its toll on those of us that just work regular jobs. So unfortunately, these guys are working in the heat. They're working in PPE. So, and obviously they're working very stressful type work. So we've got to keep them well rested. We've got to keep them well hydrated and we have to keep them fed. Uh, and that's what we're working on now. We've got a logistics section that's taking care of getting food and water and Gatorade out here. 
Like I said, we're getting them in our rehab van to give them small breaks and conditioned air. And then we're going to completely rotate these crews out every four hours. So we have the capacity to do that. We've got a unit in each one of our fire stations. We're getting support from Wichita Fire as well as emergency management. And uh, we're going to stay ahead of it and take good care of our people. Yeah, it was six or seven days. Um, I'm hoping it goes quicker. The wind's going to help. The wind makes the fire consume the material faster, which is good. Um, but, you know, we're, we're going to play the cards that were dealt. Like I said, we've got to try to keep it contained first. If we can get it contained, then we can start looking at a time frame. There's been no damage to the structures or to the equipment that's on site. It's only to the materials that are sitting on the ground. Like I said, our crews responded last night and did a great job of protecting that first big building that's a primary uh, structure and a primary, uh, uh, I just lost the word. It was a primary exposure. They did a great job of getting on that really quick and getting a lot of water on the fire. And even to this point now, we're still protecting that exposure. I'm sorry, one more time. Yeah, so an exposure is a building or a piece of property that isn't necessarily involved in the fire, but it's at risk of becoming involved in the fire. So right now we have a bunch of businesses on the east side, we have some homes to the northeast, and we have some pretty major manufacturing directly to the north. We have some buildings on site, and we have some truck and tractor trailers and other equipment on site. All of those things are exposure. We don't consider the lumber to be exposure because that's what's burning. So everything else that's not burning is an exposure and that's what we're trying to protect. Very dense area. The only way I think we can get it to work is if we got helicopter support from the Air Guard. I don't think we could bring an uh, airplane through here. So we're working through emergency management to see what kind of assistance would be possible through the Air Guard. And if they say it's a no-fly day, maybe the winds are too high or it's too dense of an area, if it's a no-go, it's a no-go. We just want to look at what our options are. There's probably not even enough water to put it out with that. That would help us keep it contained. There's just, there's so much fire and so much fuel. We're just, you know, trying to keep it from spreading to other piles. So I think we're going to do this again at 3 here. If you all want to come back, uh, if I have an update for you, I'll meet you here at 3 o'clock, okay? All right, thank you all.